the first task, developmental task for a newborn baby is to attach and it's necessary for survival, for every aspect of life, for food, for shelter, for, for warmth, for um, physical nurturance. And it's a biological drive. It's, it's inbuilt, ingrained, it's hardwired in every single mammal, whether we're talking about gorillas, dolphins, dogs, or human babies, they all have this drive to attach. And this is done through the gazing into um, the mother or whoever the caregiver's eyes, the attachment cry that draws that caregiver to them to see what that, that infant's needs are. Do you need feeding? Do you need comforting? Are you wet? Do you need changing? And that, uh, that whole drive, that bond between the child and the caregiver is something that happens from birth, it's instantaneous. And you know, in utero, um, that child is you know, developing a relationship um, you know, with, with mum. So that child is going to be uh, really uh, absorbing and feeling whatever is going on for, for mum. So if mum's feeling happy and relaxed and she's you know, feeling that things are going well and she's feeling physically healthy in the pregnancy, you know, the baby's going to be um, you know, feeling and experiencing um, all of that. If mum is stressed, if she's sick, um, then that's also going to be transmitted to the baby too. And particularly when there is an understanding of attachment and how important um, attachment is in child development. Uh, I think a lot of parents can feel like if I'm not responding to all of my child's needs um, all the time and I get it right every time, then I'm going to do some um, you know, terrible damage to my child. And I think that, that is, um, that's an unrealistic expectation. There is no such thing as the perfect um, parent and no parent can uh, respond to their child's needs every time, every moment. And that's actually not necessary. What's important for a strong attachment bond is not just that um, the, the child experiences you know, enough of the time that they get their needs met in a reasonable amount of time, but that they also experience when we call, um, what we call attachment disruption if mum or dad or whoever it is that's looking after the child doesn't respond to the child's need and the child gets distressed and there is a, a disconnect in what the child's needs are and how the adult, the caregiver, is responding to those needs. It's how that bond is actually repaired that is the most important aspect so that the child knows that um, things can get disrupted in relationships, that you know, mum's not always going to be there the instant they want them or they need them, but they have the experience of that repair then happening with mum or dad or whoever it is that's taking care of them, being able to come to soothe them, to calm them down and respond to what they, what they need. And that's what helps a child develop a secure attachment um, and also helps them learn to regulate themselves because children don't know how to regulate, they don't have those capacities. But it's through the, um, through the touch, through the soothing, through the relationship with their caregivers that they then learn as they get older to be able to, they internalise those soothing capacities and can then do it for um, themselves as they get older. But for children who grow up in a chaotic um, and a, a dysfunctional, abusive environment, it's a very, very dis different story um, for that child because they still have the same biological need for survival to attach to their caregivers, but they're also in the situation is, is that they are needing to attach to the person who is also causing them distress. And this puts a child in a very difficult double bind situation because just as much as that there is a drive to move towards um, your caregiver to your parent for that safety, for that security, for that attachment, there is also equally a survival mechanism to withdraw from a dangerous situation. 
So that child has to find a way to protect themselves and they do that by trying to withdraw from that dangerous person. But where can they go? There's nowhere for a child to go. So what they're going to do is they're going to withdraw within themselves. And what we find in that situation is a, a child who grows up with an attachment style where they both approach people and then they avoid them when they get too close. When they get too close, there is a fear, this person could hurt me, so I also now have to withdraw away from them. And that's going to um, create what we call a disorganized attachment style, where a child is constantly monitoring their surroundings and monitoring the adults around them to see how do I need to behave? How do I need to um, look after myself in this situation because I can't trust that the adults around me are going to be there for me. And that can create a lot of difficulties for um, them developing relationships at school and as they get older um, uh, in adult relationships too.